Yeah. Plenty to talk about. Well, I haven't even got to much of what's going on at home. I mean, we barely even touched on that. And I do want to make sure we do talk about it, though. But um, in terms of the question we're putting out to the audience, what can British politicians learn from what happened in Europe uh, over the well voting since Thursday? What do you think that lesson is? Well, look, I, clearly, right around Europe, the same thing is happening, which is mainstream politicians have ignored the public for a very long time on all the things we always talk about. Yeah. Uh, mass migration, crime, woke issues, net zero, and ordinary people doing ordinary jobs, living in ordinary places, doesn't matter if that's in just outside Berlin or just outside of Basingstoke, are getting poorer and worse off for it, and increasingly are prepared to look at those politicians that are prepared to address those issues and there is and, stop, a, and, and don't call them names don't call them names and there is don't a, call people bigots and then say vote for me there is a common vein that runs through Nigel Farage's um, uh, national leadership here that is, is going to see reform go up in the polls uh, that it runs through Marine Le Pen, that runs through uh, the AFD in Germany, that runs through Maloney in Italy, uh, uh, Hungary, Poland, lots of other countries. Even Luxembourg has elected its first so-called hard right. And mm. I agree with you, these terms are abused all the time. Okay. And in immigration is always used, like the BBC and others, in a sort of a oh, very derogatory way. And also, by the way, you can see the tone of, of, of you know, hear the tone and see the faces of the reporters. And they sort of, oh... It's a very, it's a very bad night, these European elections. Like, oh, I thought you were all neutral. Oh, you're not neutral. You think these are bad, these election results. It doesn't take much for the master to slip on the BBC, it does it? It really does it, let's be honest, but there we are, yeah. Yeah, and look, but politicians here need to wake up to this because, of course, we've got our elections in a few weeks and a very similar thing is happening. Mainstream political conservative movement has ignored, has abused those that have raised those yeah. concerns. Lee Anderson, of course, was thrown out of the Conservative Party in part for talking about these issues. Yeah. And, yeah, a lot of people don't like the way that these politicians ride across Europe. Same thing with all of them, are inelegant, are clumsy with how they speak about it. But a lot of people at home home aren't necessarily the most eloquent or elegant and don't want to think about I've got a radio show and I'm not <laughs> exactly don't want to don't want to have to get a law degree before they opine on the issues yeah, of the day exactly and it, it is extraordinary isn't it and, and again I think this um is ties in with the appeal of Nigel Farage and the various parties he's led in recent in recent years and of course with Donald Trump when when they when people castigate Americans for you know the deplorables for voting for Donald Trump um again I, I don't hold accountable for Donald Trump I think he's an appalling human being I also think Joe Biden and I think it's now pretty clear after the events that uh, we learned a lot of the D-Day commemorations in France last Friday, did we not, um, about our political leaders. Is Rob Joe Biden is unfit for office. It is untenable for that man to be running for the presidency of the United States. Untenable. Absolutely absurd. He shouldn't be in the job right now. But you can see, you know, if Trump is so awful, why are people not, not, not voting for the alternative? And they're not because he is still saying some things that people want said. But let's just go through what has happened yesterday in France. Well, the results come out. People have voted from Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday in, uh, across Europe. In France, Marine Le Pen's national rally, or used to be, you know, the front, uh, used to be the Front National, um, they, they won 32% of the vote. They came top. Macron's Renaissance Party, um, he's already not got um, a, a majority in the in National Assembly, their parliament. He only got 15%. I mean, that is extraordinary. He's still in power. He's still the president until 2027. He's got a five year term. He's got a 21 percent approval rating. To be fair, Rishi Sunak would die for that sort of approval rating. Right? He's called a snap election. Uh, they always have double elections, 27th of June, 7th of July. So just three days after our, our general election here, we're going to find out what happens in, uh, in, in uh, France. It is perfectly possible that Marine Le Pen will be the Prime Minister of France on the 7th of July. Um, Jordan Bardella, uh, the 28-year-old um, president of the party, people talk about that he's not, he's not the leader of the, the party in Parliament. Uh, he's, he was a leader candidate in European elections. I mean, that would be an extraordinary change of affairs. Germany, the, uh, the Chancellor Olaf Scholz, SDP, they came third, just 14% of the vote. The AFD, the Alternative for Deutschland, the far-right party, uh, came second. 
um, on 60% of the vote. Um, Italy, Giorgio Maloney party, you mentioned her brothers of the Italy party, uh, they won a massive majority, 30% of the vote. In a proportional representation system, that is a huge, huge, huge turnout for her and indeed for Marine Le Pen's party. Belgium, the Prime Minister, Alexander de Croup, no, I'd not heard of him either, um, he is going to resign today after his Liberal Party got just wait for it, 6% of the vote. 6%. Again, hard right, far right winning between them, you know, about 40% of the vote. Austria, the far right, the Freedom Party, they won 27% of the vote. But all of this, is it, I mean, it's not been the case in every... Different countries have different stories, but there is no doubt at all it's the rise of the right wing. Why then, in here in the UK, are we seeing a centre-left party, supposedly, the Labour Party, coming looking like, according to the polls, they're coming to power. Well, look, it's it, it, everywhere in Europe there is a rejection of the status quo and it's hardly surprising why. <laughs> and it just so happens that we've got Conservatives in charge. And look, we have a first-past-the-post system. Yeah, very which different. basically it? punishes you for your electoral broad philosophical coalition being split. Now, as a result of that, the fact that reform is going to take 17 points in the polls and... The Conservatives are going to take 19 points in the polls, despite the fact that the right of the Conservative Party basically think the same as reform, will mean that overall they will get many, many fewer seats than Labour. Now, were you to add up the reform vote share to the Conservative vote share, there wouldn't be much between no. where They're Conservatives and Labour so, are. So, do you agree with the former Home Secretary, Suella Braverman, writing in the Telegraph today, saying that basically the, the, the right of the, the, well, the Tories should Im basically embrace Nigel Farage? Well, look, I've got to the point where now, who else have the Tory party got to turn to in some ways? Because... I thought Penny Morden was the great white hope with her very, very, very large hair at that debate last week. I'm not going to comment on the hair, but I will say that the poll showed she lost. She went up against Nigel Farage and the she poll was, showed she was the least popular politician of any of them. She was really not stage. very good, actually.